thanks for the great introduction. And also, uh, did you notice during the interval that uh, the song was appropriate? It was come together by a group called the Beatles, and they're from Liverpool, you know. We hardly, <laughs> we hardly ever mention it. I just thought it was appropriate. Look, um, thanks very much. I am the mayor of the Liverpool City region, proudly so. And um, now I've um, sort of uh, said my piece. I'm from uh, an area that I believe is the cultural and creative capital of the UK. So for all those people outside of Liverpool, I've probably just split you up. Um, but it is great to be in the second city of the UK. <laughs> Uh, it, it's to talk about something that is close to my heart, and it, it's about educational inequality, really. Um, but all joking aside, it, it is great to be here because I think some of the things and the work that you all do on our behalf is absolutely pivotal to the life chances of so many people in this country. Today, uh, the Liverpool City region is not perhaps what you think if you believe some of the stereotypes in the right-wing press. Uh, it is vibrant, dynamic, and it's a thriving place to live, work, set up business in, and also to visit. Um, and we've got something next year called Eurovision, and you're all invited. <laughs> I can't promise all your tickets, but some of you perhaps. Um, look, our, our, sex, our, our success has been built on an abundance of the most valuable asset anywhere can have, its people. And too often, unfortunately, they've been held back prevented from reaching their full potential, but not by a lack of talent, but by a lack of opportunity. And time and time again, I speak to, to parents and, and grandparents um, concerned that their kids and grandkids are being disadvantaged, let down by a rigged system, which will always favor the wealthy and the connected. So we can't stand back and allow that to happen. And I reckon that every person in this room at some point in their lives will have had a second chance. And I know that happened to me and even um, beyond that. And I grew up in a place called Kirby. Uh, it was a new town and it's just outside of Liverpool during the slum clearance areas, people were moved out. Um, w their idea though of place and of community cohesion was to give us a pub and a chippy. That's about all we had to congregate around. Um, and so you can imagine that aspirations were low. As it's just been said, I left school with very few formal qualifications um, and um, many of my contemporaries did also. Opportunities then during the late 70s, early 80s were few and far between for, for kids like me. And university wasn't even an option uh, for a lot of young working class uh, kids. I'm not thick, by the way. I went on to do a degree and a master's degree later on in life, but I'm talking about the early stages uh, in life. And, and there wasn't much in the way of training. If you remember at that time, it was the dreaded Youth Opportunities Programme. Some of the older people will remember that and what that was all about. So an apprenticeship and the opportunity to study later in life allowed me to make the improbable journey from a building site to Parliament, and now to the the mayor of the region that I love. And I never thought for one second when I was growing up that someone like me would end up being elected to the Commons or to the post that I fulfill today. But thankfully, the world has moved on a lot since I was a kid. Although I believe that the challenges facing our young people in areas like mine um, haven't changed that much at all over those intervening decades. And I want to do everything in my power to ensure that every young person gets the opportunities to thrive. Now, back then, national government actually stood in the way of people's success. And there's some who believe that the current government would like to um, revert back to that. Not me, of course. Um, but devolution for us has proved the, uh, itself to be a difference maker. Uh, I think... Tim mentioned about devolution earlier, and he's absolutely right. We, we can't and shouldn't accept that everything should be run from a, a lumbering monolith in Whitehall. Just look at the damage that some former secretaries of state for education have done to our system over the past decade. And so there is a better way of doing things where local people, 
understand the challenges and the opportunities of their area far better than Whitehall or Westminster could ever. So today we're in Battersea, and the idea has just been said that what works here would automatically work just as well in Bradford or Bristol or Birkenhead is simply not grounded in reality. Look, I'm a great believer in the fact that decisions should be taken as locally as possible. Solutions have to be tailored to the needs of a locality. And in such a short space of time in the city region, I think we've demonstrated the difference that devolution is making. And through targeted programmes like our Young Persons Guarantee, we're given hope. And that means for some of our young people, hope that there will be a job, training or an apprenticeship within six months of them leaving education or employment, giving them the chance to achieve their full potential. And where would we be without hope? Probably in Liz Truss's house. Um, But we have to uh, approach and focus on treating our young people as human beings and not on you know, needs or labour market statistics or whatever we, we clump them together as. And without getting all Whitney Houston, um, our young people are our future and they are the country's future too. So we have to put them in the best possible position to succeed. Now, I think from looking around the room, we're probably all in agreement that the biggest difference that we can make in a person's life chances is early years interventions. And this isn't something that I have direct control of as the, the mayor. Uh, my powers are more over adult education and training budgets. But I always like to say that scousers learn to read between the lines before they can actually read words. And so I've looked at my devolution agreement and it tells me things that I should do, but nowhere does it tell me things that I shouldn't do. So I'm doing them. I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting for the government to tell me not to do them. Um, and at this moment in time, they're not because we're getting a bigger bang for our book. We're doing better than the national government could ever do on our behalf. But one of the great powers that you do get is, as a mayor is to bring people together, hence the song, remember at the beginning, come together. Uh, so the, the powers, the soft powers that you get are able to leverage the role that I fulfill and the resources of the combined authority as a convener to get people to work together. And it's something that I've been doing um, certainly in the last few years uh, under the guidance and direction of Sir Paul Grant, who I think people might hear might know, but was um, very much involved in the London Challenge. Paul's now working to do something similar in the city region because for all the talk of levelling up we've heard in the past few years, nearly half of the kids in my region leave primary school unable to read or write. So something is seriously wrong, isn't it? Because it's not the teachers, let's face it. It's no good investing billions of pounds later on in shiny buildings and infrastructure projects, creating many, many new jobs and businesses if our people don't have the relevant skills to work in them. So the fact is that we have, we still have, the two-tier system that exists in this country. Too many people's fates are decided before they even set school in the classroom. Their future is determined by the wealth of their parents or the postcode that they come from. And in 2020, for example, only 5% of pupils on free school meals in our region achieved grade five or above in GCSE, English and maths, compared with 30% nationally. So that just can't be tolerated. And you're gonna hear from Graham Duncan shortly um, about what his organization does, but I just wanna to touch briefly on the pioneering project we're running with them in the Liverpool city region. It's called Cradle to Career. You might hear a bit about this uh, today. It's a pilot scheme that we've been supporting in a place called Birkenhead in my region. Uh, it was instigated and made possible by the Steve Morgan Foundation and Shine. 
but it's specifically targeted at those areas of deprivation where kids are being held back by circumstances. It's a radical and bespoke approach that works with the community to identify the issues and come up with solutions. And in, short, in a short space of time, its results have been marked. Nearly a year gained in reading uh, above the expected grades, a reduction uh, in cases being referred to social services compared with the, the borough average, and a third more social care cases being stepped down uh, in the Wirral as a whole. Now, we've been so impressed by its impact that we've recently approved a further £5 million of funding to roll this out across the city region. And so, to conclude, it would be remiss of me not to mention the elephant in the room, the national government, um, who are limited, limiting our ability to do more. But, for instance, it wouldn't cost them any more money in as much as there's a, a massive underspend of billions of pounds of uh, the apprenticeship levy funding, uh, which is diverting away from the government's stated mission to plug those skills gaps and skills shortages, so we could use some of that more creatively. And there are the alarming warnings about further austerity uh, in a sector still reeling from the cuts and reforms over the last decade. But I don't want to end on a downer, so I'll leave you with this. The solution to such concerns already exists and it's working. The future is devolution and working with mayors. The more funding and decisions that we can uh, make and prize away from central government, the more we can empower communities to shape their own destinies and the more we can change people's lives and give our children the future they deserve, keeping the promise that every new generation should do better than the last. So the future is Devo, and the further and faster we can take that devolution um, leap of faith, the bigger the difference that it will make to our country. Thanks a lot.